Hey y'all, welcome back to Make It Dairy Free. I am Larisha and today we are going to be talking about almond milk. So sometimes it might be hard to find almond milk or sometimes maybe you just want to control whatever is actually in your almond milk. And so we are going to show you just how easy it is to make almond milk from scratch. In fact, you only need two ingredients. All you need is some raw almonds and some water. And while that is all you need to make a basic almond milk, y'all know we don't really do basic around here. And so not only are we gonna show you how to do that version, which is basically an unsweetened almond milk that is not flavored, we will also be showing you how to do a vanilla flavored, almond milk, a sweetened vanilla almond milk, as well as chocolate and strawberry almond milk. I think I got all of them. And oh yeah, once you make the almond milk, you are going to be left with some almond pulp and we are all about some zero waste stuff around here. So we are going to show you how to turn that into some almond flour and give you some ideas of what you can do with it. So enough talking, let's show you how to do everything. <laughs> I bet the only reason they call it almond milk is because nobody can say nut juice with a straight face. Okay, so the first thing that you are going to do is soak your almonds. The easiest way to do this is throw them in a covered bowl in the fridge overnight with water and salt if you're adding. If you are someone who wants to prep in advance, you could even leave them soaking for a day or two. The longer you are able to soak the almonds, the creamier your almond milk will be. You want to use raw, unsalted almonds to make almond milk. Nothing roasted or flavored or your milk will taste like that and I don't know about you, but I don't want spiced sriracha flavored milk. But you do you. However, if you want them quicker, then you can just boil some water and then pour the boiling water over them. Wait for an hour or two and then proceed with the recipe. Also, we love a good zero waste recipe, but please make sure that you discard the soaking water from the almonds. After soaking almonds, it contains phytic acid and consuming that could reduce your absorption of other minerals. So please just toss it. There's plenty of zero waste ideas in this recipe. Once you have soaked your almonds, it's time to make your milk. We are adding this to our Vitamix, but any blender will work. You may just need to keep it going longer. You're going to pour in your soaked almonds first. Quick tip, you can totally double or triple this recipe when it comes to soaking your almonds. However, we recommend only processing one cup of soaked almonds at a time because most blenders can't hold enough water. Speaking of water, you're going to pour that in next. We do four cups of water for a thicker, creamier almond milk, but you can add up to five cups if you want this to go a little further. You're going to blend the almonds and water until you just see tiny pieces of almonds and no more big pieces. It will take a good three to five minutes to get to that point depending on your blender. Once you have done that, you have made a delicious homemade almond milk that will taste better than anything store-bought. Be proud of yourself, you did that. Now let's show you how to get it out of the blender so you can drink it. Next up, we are going to strain our almond milk into a bowl. We are using a nut milk bag that we will link below. We are going to fold it over so that it opens up more. We have found this is easier to pour this way because it gives a bigger opening. However, if you don't have a nut milk bag, you can use a thin kitchen towel. You are going to pour your almond milk from your blender into your bag. Take your time and pour slowly. Once all of your almond milk is in the bag, you are going to pull up the sides and then pull up a seat because you want to make sure that you really take your time and squeeze as much liquid out of the bag as possible. I know it may sound nuts, but it's going to take a bit of time to do this. You knew that pun was going to come in somewhere, didn't you? What you are doing here is squeezing all the actual almond milk away from the almond pulp that is going to be left behind. You want as much liquid strained from the pulp as possible because we're going to be using it for something else. One quick tip, the longer you soak your almonds before making the milk, the less pulp you will have at the end because the longer you soak, the more liquid you can strain. This just affects how much almond flour you are going to be left with in the next part that we're going to show you. Let's do it. All right, it's time to use that almond pulp you just saw. We love a good zero waste recipe and making your own milk at home is a great way to get a little more bang for your buck. We are going to turn this pulp into almond flour. 
Almond flour can be expensive, so being able to make it from this is an awesome benefit. On a parchment lined baking sheet, you are going to crumble the pulp as small as you can get it. Don't worry about little small clumps, but the smaller you can get it, the less time it will take. And then you are going to bake it at 200 degrees for two hours, flipping every 30 minutes or so. Once it's done, you are going to add it to a food processor or a high speed blender. Make sure it's not wet on the inside or your flour will just clump and you'll be big mad. Process this until it's fine, just like flour. It will take a few minutes to do this. Each cup of almonds in the beginning will yield you approximately half to three fourths cups of almond flour. You can store this in an airtight container for up to three months or use it right away in a recipe you choose. Use it wherever you see a recipe call for almond flour. While the pulp is baking, you can make any of the flavors that you want or leave it as is. As is is the equivalent to an unsweetened, unflavored almond milk. If you want it sweetened, just add some vegan sugar or maple syrup to it while you are blending it at the beginning. And the same if you want vanilla flavored milk. However, if you want some strawberry almond milk, you can add strawberries, water, and sugar to a pot and reduce it down to a syrup, mashing those strawberries against the side of the pot to really get all the juice out. Cook it down until the liquid has been reduced by about half, and then you're going to strain the liquid from the strawberry pulp. Use a spoon and really push down as much liquid as possible. You want to be left with a thick pulp, but don't throw away that pulp. Throw it in some muffins that you happen to be making or put it on top of pancakes. It's really delicious. Just a note, you could do this with blueberries or raspberries too if you wanted a different and uncommon flavored milk. The syrup can also be used on other desserts too. Try drizzling it over some cheesecake or even some vegan ice cream. Then we have our chocolate almond milk. Who doesn't love chocolate? Mmm, chocolate. You're going to add sugar, chocolate powder, and water to a bowl and stir together. Again, reducing this overheat by about half. We also add a little powdered sugar to thicken it up a bit. Make sure you whisk well to avoid any clumps and then your chocolate syrup is ready. You can either pour all of this into your milk and blend together or we like to add a little bit to each cup at a time so that not all the almond milk is one flavor. Just a note about pouring the milk into a container when ready. Use something with a spout. We used this clear bowl to show more about squeezing from the nut milk bag earlier in the video, but clearly it wasn't the best choice. Even pouring back into a clean blender would have been a bigger opening for us to move the milk into a jug to store. Speaking of storing, once done, put this in the fridge to cool and it will last three to five days. Also, once I put into the fridge, I like to start soaking another batch of almonds to keep the process going so that by the time we finish this, my soaked almonds are ready to go for the next batch. While this video really goes into detail about everything, it really only takes five minutes to make the unsweetened or sweetened versions and 15 minutes or so to make the chocolate or strawberry flavors. Thank you so much for watching. We truly appreciate all your support. We would love if you could give this video a like, a share, and definitely make sure to comment down below with what flavor you try first or tell us what video you want to see next. Also, let us know what dairy-free milk you think we should make next. I'm not a cow, but I make milk. <laughs> I bet the... <laughs> What did the peanut say when the almond started to pick a fight? I'm a cashew outside. <laughs> I thought about going on an all almond diet, but that's just nuts. I thought about going on an all almond Ooh, diet, but. What's this? What's this? I... What's this? Is this corny joke time? Shut up. Let me get some. No. Come on, let me get some. Oh, come on. Yeah. No. Yeah. Let me get some. Let me get some. Uh, got my almonds here too. Uh, all right. Um, let me see. All right. Hold on. Here it is. So, I like to show women um, my big bag of almonds because I like when they compliment my nut sack.
Hold on, hold on, hold on. I got another one. I got another one. Let's see. Um, so, what was what was all the almonds doing all the summer? Huh? Nothing. <laughs> one more, one more. I got one more. Hold on, let me get my own. One more. Let me get this one. Oh, oh man. Oh my God, I just stepped on an almond. I think I just busted a nut. <laughs> oh my God, you gotta go, you gotta go, you gotta go. Sorry. <laughs>